They were exactly where they were supposed to be. They were also exercising their rights to assemble peaceably, to worship freely and safely. They were exercising the rights of life and liberty and the pursuit of happiness. So surely we can reconcile those two things. Surely America doesn't have to be divided between rural and urban and Democrat and Republican when it comes to something like this. If you're an American who wants to do something to prevent more families from knowing the immeasurable anguish that these families here have known, then we have to act. Now's the time to get engaged. Now's the time to get involved. Now's the time to push back on fear and frustration and misinformation. Now's the time for everybody to make their voices heard from every State House to the corridors of Congress. And I'm asking everyone listening today, find out where your member of Congress stands on this. If they're not part of the 90 percent of Americans who agree on background checks, then ask them why not. Why wouldn't you want to make it easier for law enforcement to do their job? Why wouldn't you want to make it harder for a dangerous person to get his or her hands on a gun? What's more important to you, our children or an A grade from the gun lobby? You know, I've heard I've heard Nicole talk about what her life has been like since Dylan was taken from her in December. And one thing she said struck me. She said, every night I beg for him to come to me in my dreams so that I can see him again. And during the day I just focus on what I need to do to honor him and make change. Now, if Nicole can summon the courage to do that, how can the rest of us do any less? How can we do any less? If there's even one thing we can do to protect our kids, don't we have an obligation to try? If there's even one step we can take to keep somebody from murdering dozens of innocents in the span of minutes, shouldn't we be taking that step? If there's just one thing we can do to keep one father from having to bury his child, isn't that worth fighting for? I've got to tell you, the, uh, I've had tough days in the presidency. I've said this before. The day Newtown happened was the, the toughest day of my presidency. But I've got to tell you, if we don't respond to this, that'll be a tough day for me, too. Because, because we, we, we've got to expect more from ourselves, and we've got to expect more from Congress. We've got to believe that, you know, every once in a while, we set politics aside, and we just do what's right. We've got to believe that. And if you believe that, I'm asking you to stand up. If you believe in the right to bear arms like I do, but think we should prevent an irresponsible few from inflicting harm, stand up. Stand up. If you believe that the families of Newtown and Aurora and Tucson and Virginia Tech and the thousands of Americans who have been gunned down in the last four months deserve a vote. We all have to stand up. If you want the people you send to Washington to have just an iota of the courage that the educators at Sandy Hook showed when danger arrived on their doorstep, 
that we're all going to have to stand up. And if we do, if we come together and raise our voices together and demand this change together, I'm convinced cooperation and common sense will prevail. We will find sensible, intelligent ways to make this country stronger and safer for our children. So let's do the right thing. Let's do right by our kids. Let's do right by these families. Let's get this done, Connecticut. Thank you. God bless you. God bless the United States of America. And they're the president. Um, obviously, going to Connecticut, uh, not coincidental in this issue for all the reasons you just heard. The president will be flying back to Washington on Air Force One, but he will not be flying back alone. In addition, um, there will be families like the Hockleys who lost their six-year-old son, Dylan. Um, the Bardens who lost their seven-year-old uh, son, Daniel the Marquez Greens, who lost their six-year-old daughter, Anna, the Heslin, Neil Heslin, who was the father of six-year-old Jesse, no longer with us. Um, you have another mother who lost her six-year-old, and it goes on and on, all told. There'll be seven or eight families that will accompany the president back to Washington to where the is issue goes from a stump address here to hopefully a vote. But there are questions about whether or not that vote will even come up. I want to bring in our panel right now um, to discuss this. And let's bring in Dominic Carter, political journalist and author. Also with us tonight, Richard St. Paul, Republican strategist and former vice chair for the National Black Republican Association and former staffer for former Pennsylvania Governor Tom Ridge and Andrew Whitman, um, our senior political correspondent. All right, guys. Um, the president um, has made impassioned pleas on this before. Um, but among things that he said was that those families and this issue deserves a vote. Um, we know the math, Andrew. Right now it looks like uh, the assault weapons ban probably is not even going to come up for a vote. Um, and we also know that uh, the ammo clip restriction, even though the president called for it, like the assault weapons ban, in all likelihood there's not the votes for it. So even though both of those have popularity support, uh, the majority of Americans behind, it looks like a universal background check or some facsimile of it's going to be the closest thing to a big ticket item this president can hope to get through, and there's no guarantees of that. And yeah, that's far from certain. Whether we'll even see a final vote on a background check bill is far from certain, which is why the president was in Denver last week near Columbine and why he's in Hartford today near Newtown, trying to stir people's emotions, trying to rally support for something that a lot of people didn't think he was going to need to rally support for a few months ago and, and invoking the, the memories of victims and massacres past to try to change the future. You know, Dominic, we talked at the time that um, the attention span of the American public is a short one. Um, and we said, listen, if past tragedies or past crises hold five weeks, usually is a good yardstick for you better move fast on something before the public will move on to something else. And, and that's not to say Newtown is in front and center for Americans. Uh, everybody uh, heart broke that day. That said, though, I didn't think it was possible that Washington wouldn't have gotten anything done on this. Um, but where we are right now, there's a real chance that could happen. Um, you surprised that the president literally had to still do retail politics on this, and here we are in April. Yes, I am. Uh, one, that's what the president does when he's at his best, when he is out of Washington, reaching out to people, and that's what we're seeing tonight. The president is literally turning up the heat on lawmakers in Washington. But I, I, I would never have thought, Richard, they would have come to this after what occurred in Newtown. I thought the political will would be there. I thought the NRA would run for cover and would be embarrassed and would hide, and they've become more emboldened than ever. Mr. Uh, LaPierre. Yep. Hey, help me out with the math on this one, Richard, which is, and I'm not asking you to explain or apologize for some, but uh, there's reports that as many as 13 members, uh, Republican members in the House, will filibuster this if it comes up for a vote. If 90% of the general public supports universal background checks, and three quarters of the NRA does, in the end, even if all politics are local, people have to do the math public wants this. Even the membership wants this. The NRA already gave them blessing that they can vote on it. This is not good news for the National Party or even for anybody. 
to get behind a measure where they're the roadblock to a vote for something the public says, let's do. Tell me why this is a politically sustainable position. Here's a problem. Let's look at the bill. It's called the Safe School and Safe Communities Act, right? <clears throat> What's in the bill? Not only universal background checks, but a national gun registry, a gun tax for if you sell your private weapon to another private individual, you'll be taxed on that. If you lose your weapon and don't report it to the police, you can face up to five years in jail and be charged with a, f with a felony. In addition to that, the bill, which is a positive thing, provides grants for security to campuses and schools. And that's really what we're talking about here. See, the president and the Democrats want to politicize this bill. They, it's not just about universal background checks, but it's about the National Registry. It's about intruding on the Second Amendment. If it was just about universal background checks, we wouldn't have an issue. Uh, that, uh, that's not universal, what you said. There are people who say, you do a universal background check here. It's the first step in a slippery slope to the government kicking down your door in dead of night and taking your gun away. I've heard folks say it. We've had sound bites. I'm not going to, if we want, I can play it. To me, Richard, the public doesn't agree on, 90% of the public doesn't agree on anything, and they want this. They already know there won't be an assault weapons ban. I've done the math. They're not going to have even ammo clip restrictions. It doesn't matter what the president mm -hmm. said tonight. That's not going to happen. And this database, as much as we think it might make sense, they're probably not even going to get that across the board. Just background checks that a felon, a guy on a terror watch list, somebody with bipolar disorder, that we should know who's buying a gun and the public's good with that. John McCain even said this weekend, I don't get anybody who's standing in the way of a vote. In the end, will Republicans say, let's at least get the vote on the table, or if somebody filibusters this thing, will anybody in leadership condemn them? I think, I think the important part is this bill needs to be changed for the reasons I stated before. There's too much in the bill that is too problematic. Newtown, Aurora, Columbine, Fort Hood, 9-11, these are all acts of terrorism. And the way that we've dealt with these acts of terrorism is we've improved our security. That's part of the bill that needs to be discussed. Okay. And background and checks. And you know what? And we're going to keep this conversation going on this subject and also... We're going to bring in the stakeholders for whom this issue is the most personal. And, of course, I'm talking about the Newtown parents. When we come back from break, we're going to be talking about what they want and why. Um, and we're also going to be talking about who, in effect, would be stopped if this conversation became law. And we'll continue our debate right after this.